If you're a serious fan of the UFC, then you know that a fight between Khabib and Ferguson nearly happened on several occasions. Yet, it never came to fruition, much to the discernment of Dana White and the promotion. But what would have happened if these two lightweight titans had clashed inside the octagon? Join us in this video as we break down a fight that never happened between two of the best lightweights to ever compete in the UFC. Don't forget to stick around till the end to get our official prediction on who walks away with the victory if these two ever faced off in the UFC's octagon. Believe it or not, on five separate occasions, the UFC announced that Khabib Nurmagomedov and Tony Ferguson would share the octagon. Yet, each and every time, the fight fell through. The first announcement was back in 2015. Dana White announced the UFC booked lightweight contenders Khabib and Ferguson on the finale of the 22nd season of The Ultimate Fighter. However, Khabib pulled out of the bout after picking up a rib injury. The pair were again up for a UFC on Fox event in 2016. Yet, Tony Ferguson pulled out of the fight this time. In a tweet at the time, Ferguson explained why he had to pull out. Usually I can power through small bumps and bruises. The doctor said I have fluid blood in my lungs. I will heal up. I will be back. The fight would be scheduled three more times over the next few years. The next was scheduled for January 2017, yet Khabib soon pulled out after being hospitalized for weight management issues. Dana White announced the fight for a fourth time where it would be the main event of UFC 223, where it was rumored to be for the lightweight title. However, Ferguson would pull out after requiring surgery on his lateral collateral ligament. The fight was announced for a fifth and final time in November 2019. However, by March, it was in jeopardy as the coronavirus pandemic began cancelling events all over the globe. While Dana was adamant the fight would go on, not long after, Khabib confirmed he was back home in Dagestan. Khabib would speak directly to his fans on Instagram Live and reveal he could not compete against Ferguson at UFC 249 because of COVID-19 and travel bans. This was the last time the fight was ever announced. Soon after, the careers of both fighters would go in opposite directions. Before we break down the strengths and weaknesses of each fighter, let's first discuss their rise to the top of the UFC, starting with Tony Ferguson. Born in Oxan, California in 1984, Tony Ferguson came from a Mexican Scottish heritage and mostly grew up in Muskegon, Michigan. During his early years in school, he excelled in three sports, including football, baseball and wrestling. He competed in wrestling throughout his years in college and went on to win the 2006 National Collegiate Wrestling Association Championship at 165 pounds. After college, Ferguson moved back to California and began working as a salesperson during the day and a bartender at night. During one shift, a customer noticed Ferguson's cauliflower ear and the pair started talking about his wrestling career. Not long after, the customer invited him to his local MMA gym and not long after, Ferguson decided to begin competing. Ferguson began his professional career in 2007 and had initial success fighting for small promotions. After going 10 for 2, he applied for the 13th season of the Ultimate Fighters and was accepted. Ferguson joined Team Lesnar and managed to get to the final after three impressive Impressive TKO finishes. Ramsey Nejen was the man standing in the way of a professional contract. With the pair met in the finale, Ferguson finished his opponent in the first round. He made his official UFC debut in 2011 and earned an impressive victory over Aaron Riley. He followed up with a decision victory over Eves Edwards before losing to Michael Johnson in May 2012. However, the loss seems to have brought out the best in Ferguson, for he would go on a 12-fight win streak that stretched over seven years. During this time, Time, he defeated great fighters including Josh Thompson, Edson Barboza and Kevin Lee. A fight that earned him the lightweight division's interim strap. During these long stretch of wins, a fight with Khabib had been organised and cancelled on five occasions as we previously mentioned. After finishing Donald Cerrone at UFC 238, Ferguson would once again fight for the interim title. However, this time he would be finished by Justin Gaethje in the fifth round of their clash at UFC 249. Unfortunately for Al Kakui, it would bring forth an extended losing streak, which currently stands at six losses. Now that we've discussed Ferguson's background, let's talk about Khabib. Khabib Nurmagomedov grew up in the Russian province of Dagestani. From a young age, he was trained in wrestling and other martial arts by his father, Abdul Mana. A decorated athlete and veteran of the Soviet army, from age 12 onwards, Khabib trained in wrestling and judo and took up combat sambo. After transitioning to MMA in 2008, Khabib made his debut in September and would go on to claim his first four victories in under a month. Over the next three 
three years, Khabib went on a hot streak, earning 12 wins and finished 11 opponents in as many fights. When Khabib's impeccable record reached 16 wins and zero losses, the UFC came knocking and signed up the Dagestani to a six-fight deal at the end of 2011. In his UFC debut, Khabib defeated Kamal Shaloris via submission in the third round of their clash. The Dagestani would follow up with eight further wins, earning victories over fighters such as Rafael Dos Anjos and Michael Johnson, which earned him a chance to become the lightweight champion at UFC 223. Standing in Khabib's way for the vacant titles was Alia Quinta. When the pair met in April of 2018, the fight would last the full five rounds and the Dagestani would take home the belt by way of a unanimous decision. During his rise to become champion, and even after, Khabib was supposed to fight Ferguson, yet it never transpired. He would, however, go on to defend his title against Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier, and Justin Gaethje before deciding to retire in 2020. Now that we've discussed the backstory of both fighters, let's break down their strengths and weaknesses, starting with Tony Ferguson. While it's hard to see any way in which the current version of Tony Ferguson defeats Prime Khabib, however, once upon a time, Al Kakui was considered one of the top contenders in the division and had many strengths that would work in his favour if the fight against Khabib happened. Here are the two most obvious. Strength number one, unique and aggressive striking. Ferguson has a unique form of striking that is hard for opponents to read and grasp. He is known as an aggressive striker that some may see as loose, yet it works because of his insane physical attributes. He constantly pressures his opponents and focuses on bringing forth as much damage as possible. Ferguson batters his opponents from all angles, using straight punches and powerful jabs, and isn't afraid to enter into the pocket and land heavy hooks. Over time, he strikes to begin to work opponents down and maybe even force Khabib to back off due to the threat of knees, elbows, and uppercuts. On top of this, Ferguson's long limbs can be challenging to deal with. He'll land a ton of kicks in fights, and his front kick is particularly dangerous. Al Kakui walks his opponents down by landing huge kicks to the midsection and uses both the orthodox and southpaw stances when throwing leg kicks, making them difficult to block or parry. Again, this would have worked in favour against a wrestler such as Khabib, as Ferguson would have been able to read the distance, thus reducing the chance of getting taken down. Strength number two, wrestling. Ferguson is no stranger to wrestling encounters, and in his prime, he was a great counter wrestler. He's a difficult fighter to take down, and he was even harder to control during his prime. His clinch work and defensive sprawls were solid. This would have played a key role in his ability to stuff Khabib's takedown had he shot in from a distance. While some would suggest his wild stand-ups could expose him, Ferguson has excellent scrambling abilities that allow him to escape those scrappy situations. On top of this, Ferguson is well-equipped in Brazilian BJJ and has scored eight impressive submission victories. This could have played into his favour had Khabib taken him down. Now that we've discuss his two major strengths. Let's talk about the one glaring weakness Ferguson has in his game. Weakness overexposes his chin. Ferguson is known for leaving his arms a little too low around the midsection, which leaves his chin open. We know he isn't afraid of damage, however, he has suffered many defeats simply because his chin is exposed when it shouldn't be. One good example is the fight against Michael Chandler. If Khabib can land an overhand ride, just as he did against McGregor, it would have certainly phased Ferguson and may have even finished him on a particular night. With that being said about Ferguson, let's discuss Khabib's strength and weaknesses. Strength number one, wrestling. First and foremost, Khabib is one of the greatest wrestlers to ever enter into the octagon. We'll see the Dagestani perfectly time a takedown and more often than not begin to wrap up his opponents with a serpent-like grip. Khabib is an expert in shooting for single leg takedowns. While Ferguson may have the experience to resist the takedown, Khabib is relentless with pressure and won't hesitate to keep shooting. If the Dagestani can get Al Kakulai to the ground and begin using his legs to wrap him up, he may be in one of the few fighters to hold Ferguson to the ground. Strength number two, underappreciated striking. When we think of Khabib, we don't necessarily associate the Dagestani with sharp or aggressive striking. However, he did grow to become a well-rounded mixed martial artist who was able to drop some of the best strikers in the division, including Conor McGregor. Khabib typically uses his striking to get in close for takedown, yet he can land a powerful overhand ride that can be hard to see coming. More often than not, the Dagestani striking comes as a surprise element many fighters forget to account for. Now let's talk about the one minor weakness that may have appeared 
appeared in Khabib's game had he faced off against Ferguson. Weakness, leg locks. In a style similar to many Dagestani's wrestlers who train in judo and sambo, leg locks are not considered an important issue until later, as they are not permitted in sambo competitions. Therefore, against a fighter such as Ferguson, who isn't afraid to try unique positions, there's a possibility that Khabib could be caught in a heel hook of some kind. Whether or not he would have had the expertise to escape from someone with such a high level in BJJ, such as Ferguson, is a question we'll unfortunately never get answered. With that being said about the strengths of weaknesses of both fighters. It's now time for our official prediction on the fight that never happened between Khabib and Ferguson. But before we do that, we hold a monthly shout out on our channel and all you need to do to enter is comment I subbed in the comments section below. So make sure to comment and you'll be in with a chance of winning. Had the fight between Ferguson and Khabib happened before the pandemic, it would have undoubtedly been a great contest between two of the UFC's best fighters. There's a good chance it could have gone either way. Ferguson would have been a tricky matchup for the Dagestani. However, we believe Khabib would have taken home the victory. The first few rounds would have been close, but we believe that Khabib would have slowly worked Ferguson down. Our official prediction is that by the fourth round, Ferguson's inability to cover his chin would have allowed Khabib to rock him with an overhand before moving in for a takedown. From here, we imagine that Dagestani would have locked up Ferguson on the ground and slowly worked to the bag to finish him in typical Khabib style with a rear naked choke or crank. 